All right, hi guys, it's TSU Rules here, and I've just been watching the PS3 conference, literally just finished, it's 4.20 in the morning here in the UK, and um, yeah, it was fucking awesome. We'll just start off with the bad news, the one bit of bad news that came out of this con, of the um, conference, and that is that um, you will now be required to have PlayStation Plus to play online for PS4, and that's the... That's the only bad thing that came out. I personally have PlayStation Plus ready. It's an incredible deal for the PS3, but we have no idea what it's going to cost for the PS4. So it's a bit of a shame. That was a bit of a that was a bit of a blow. I'm a little bit annoyed about that. They did say a while ago that PlayStation, the um, PSN, would always be free. But I guess this is a different um, service now, so it was always a possibility. But you can still play. <laughs> you can still play um, single player games. You don't have to have a, a subscription for that and do everything else but play multiplayer games, essentially, playing online. And we don't know what the price is yet. They they mentioned it's less than $5, I think they said, $5. Yeah, $5 a month. So hopefully it'll be a similar price to what it is now. And you still get the free games, you still get the instant connection, all that kind of thing. So it's still a good deal, but I can understand people being annoyed that you have to have it now. I was going to continue with it anyway because it's so brilliant, but, you know, I can understand why people be annoyed about that. But um, moving on, that was the only thing that I personally was annoyed about. We'll move on to um, this little video here that I think is very important. It's um, it's been talked about a lot with Xbox, the used games thing, and this video shows you how used games works on PS4, and it's very very crucial that you watch this. It's um, a very important video, so I'll just put it on right now. This is how you share your games on PS4. Thanks. PlayStation. And as you can see, <laughs> oh my god, it's oh, that that video is just so fucking funny. Seriously, I cannot believe what Xbox have done. I don't understand their decision. I was thinking in the days leading up to E3 that PlayStation must have done something similar, but obviously not. PlayStation have sense. Think fuck. <laughs> I just love that video so much and I'll put up right now the reaction to the announcement, or if I can find it, to the announcement that um, there's no DRM or DMR, whatever the fuck it said. Sorry, I'm tired. I can't remember what it's called and um, yeah, I'll put that reaction up now if I can find it, but yeah. There is no restriction on used games whatsoever on PS4. You buy the game, you own it, as it should be, as it's always been. Fuck Microsoft trying to change the rules, you know. Thank God, PS4, well, God, he's not real, but yeah, just thank fuck that they haven't gone with that. Because that would have been a disaster, <laughs> you know. I would have bought a PS4, but I really, really didn't want them that to happen and it hasn't because it's just complete bullshit if you buy a game it's yours you know no restrictions it is yours so that's how it works that's how it should work and thankfully that's how it does work right moving on i've got a few pages here three or four pages of notes just the start of it so yeah started off um they basically were talking about a lot of um, a lot of movie talk and that kind of thing, TV talk, and I was a bit worried at the beginning. I thought we were going to go into a whole Xbox One area where they just talk about TV, and they did for a, a little bit, but always constantly talking about gamers and gaming, saying how it's all gamer-related. Michael Linton, I think, Layton or something, was talking about it, and he saying stuff like, we've got exclusive TV content, and um, the... Instant video or something like that. The Sony service, unlimited video and unlimited music. Presuming you have to pay for them. Paper events, so that's um, sports and music and that kind of thing. And uh, I can't read my own writing. Redbox and Flixer or something are now going to be on it as well as Netflix. So yeah, I don't really care about that personally, but I'm sure some people will. And then I went back to games. Yoshida. Came on, I think that's his name, and he was talking about the fact that you get we can have 20 exclusives in the first year, 12 of them new IPs. Then they went on to um, show a game called The Order, 
and it's made by the guys who made um, God of War and that looked pretty interesting it's there wasn't really much gameplay on show but it was just a starting like it will probably be the thing that starts when you put the, the video that plays when you put the disc in your console and it looked, it looked cool it was something I think there were three or four of them there were assassins or mercenaries and they had I think futuristic well definitely futuristic weapons so that's um it looked interesting and there were aliens or monsters they were fighting saw a bit of that then they went on to talk about the games they've already showed us at the original um event you know the event they had back in february i think so killzone shadowfall driver club infamous second song which looked fucking good and knack which looked pretty good as well and three of those i think it was three of those are launch titles killzone shadowfall driver club and knack i think it was those three definitely killzone and driver club anyway which is great and then they went on to a contracting team or contracting team you know the people who made heavy rain my favorite game of this generation um tech demo real time and it was it was great the whole the start of the demo just looked completely real to me until they showed the people that um the guy they showed the guy who they had already had his face in the other thing and it you know you, you could tell there it was a game you know that, that it wasn't real but until then the background everything else looked very real to me but unfortunately it is just a tech demo it looked incredible and then it was quite funny because it turned out it was just in the studio and it was acting and there's going to be a 12 minute video tomorrow um coming out one their time in america i think well i don't know where it'll get online that was just the booths at e3 open at one so they can watch it there then they went on to talk about the witness from supergiant games and there were loads well Briefly, because there were loads of games, indie games they were talking about here, and it was um, it was pretty cool. There was just a shitload of them, and quite a, and a few of these. I think the three of them are coming to PlayStation Plus fairly early on in PS4's in PS4's lifespan, which is pretty good. Which is pretty cool. They they did look they did look great. I can't remember the names of some of them here. I think we've got Galaxy that looked pretty cool. There was one which sounded really interesting to me, which was a um, I think it was an open world shooter which randomly generates. I can't remember which one that was, but that looked that looked great. Let's see if I've got anything here. Clay Entertainment, Don't Starve. That's it. That is coming. I think that was one of the three that was coming for free. So that is fucking brilliant. And it was first on PS4. I don't care about that. I don't don't get why people do timed exclusives at all. It just makes no sense to me. Kind of annoying because you know why I don't care if I a PlayStation 4 and I will be a PlayStation 4 and get a game before an Xbox One owner. You know, it doesn't bother me at all. It's just in it's um in fact is the opposite. It just uh, you know it's um it's more hassle for them and it's just like with COD. We get it a month later. It's just more hassle. I'm not going to go out and buy an Xbox because of it. It's just pointless. So, you know, I don't get the point of that. But whatever. And then Square Inks came on, and I thought, because <laughs> they remember, if you remember, in the original event, they did a trailer of a trailer. Essentially, he came on and said, "We're going to announce something at E3," and then left. And I thought they were going to do that again. It was fucking funny. But they did actually have a trailer for us. It was um, Final Fantasy 15, and it was really, really good very very nice graphics as you expect don't know if it was you know all on ps4 or if it was pc but it was it was nice and then kingdom hearts 3 um i haven't actually played the other two personally but i know a lot of people will be excited about that that's coming next year and this, they didn't show much of that but i'm sure that would be brilliant i probably will play have to play that because i've heard so much good things about kingdom hearts 2 and 1 and then we had the assassin's creed demo black flag and that um, started off quite well, it looked quite nice, but they had some massive issues with that, which was hilarious. It um, stuttered down to about five frames a second at the end of it, and it was unwatchable, and they had to stop at that point. But it looked good. Um, basically, it started off, you're a pirate, I think, playing a pirate who's a member of whatever the Assassin's Creed is a member of, I can't remember. 
been a while since I played Assassin's Creed 2 didn't get free. But um, yeah, you're a pirate, you're torturing this guy, throwing knives at him, this is all um, a video. And then someone leaves, because you do something, someone leaves who's, who's a traitor to send a signal. Which signals an attack and you just follow him, it's a bit of stealth and eventually you kill them. It was quite a nice kill and he kills two guys at once jumping down but they already send the signal and he watches as a load of boats shoot at their little gathering on the island and it, everything goes fucking crazy. He jumps down, gets on a boat, starts steering it and that's when all the tech problems came but it was good. It looked decent. Not very next gen. But um, it did look quite cool, but I'm, I'm not a massive fan of the Assassin's Creed series anyway, but you know, if you are, I think that's exactly what people were looking for, so it looked pretty good. Then moved on to Watch Dogs, and that was really nice, that, that looked absolutely brilliant. More my kind of thing, very, very slick, you can hack everything, as I've already said before, who's saving a friend called T-Bone, I think. He was called and it was just, it was really quite cool how it all went out. Being chased by the police at the beginning, he opened some gates, drove in there and he shook them off and he could still hear them talking to him through his phone, or not talking to him, but he still could hear them talking, knew they were still looking for him. And he breaks into this little bar area and someone notices and realises him because he's just come on the news saying they were looking for him and he hacks his phone as they're trying to call, <laughs> they're trying to call the hotline or just the police to come and catch him and he like hacks his phone and knocks it to the floor so that looks that looks great really great then it was on to 2k nba i don't play that game myself but the graphics are very nice and then one of the big ones elder schools online that looks absolutely brilliant I, i'm such a big fan of the uh, elder school series <laughs> i played when the last one came out i played that so much when it originally came out, seriously, I think I kind of ruined it for myself because I had a lot of time off around the Christmas period and I was playing it constantly. I played over a hundred hours <laughs> far too quickly, far too quickly, and I haven't played it much since. Which, whereas um, Oblivion, I played a lot months after the release, so you know I, I ruined it for myself a little bit. But oh well, it's it's still a great game. I'll probably get back to it at some point, but it's. The old school online looks brilliant. No mention if it's a paper, you know, pay to play. Probably will be. Probably will be some subscription service, but it looked great. Mad Max trailer that was very, very brief. Uh, it looked okay. Pretty obvious what was going to happen in the trailer, but it was. It looked cool. It looked cool. And then some other guy called Jack Trenton came on and he started talking about how there's more than 140 games being developed for the PS4 at the moment and 100 of them will be available in the first year that's absolutely brilliant and then <laughs> got, got it massively highlighted here in my notes no use game restrictions come to that again I'll say I'll put the reaction hopefully some point in this video and I've just written <laughs> no need to put that but yeah no use game restrictions <sighs> fucking brilliant I, you know I don't see why anyone would buy an Xbox One now. If you're going to, fair enough, but I really don't see the point. PS Plus carries over, so if you've already got it like me, it will carry over to the PlayStation 3. I mean, PlayStation 4. No mention if it's the same as it is now, where if you have PlayStation Plus, you get it on all three consoles. I reckon it will be like that. Not all, um, both the consoles, the Vita and the PS3, but then obviously PS4 will so be free. I reckon you'll get PlayStation Plus across all of them with one description like you do now. I don't know, I don't see why they would change that. And um, one of the other big things they announced was PlayStation Plus gets Drivers Club PlayStation Plus Edition instantly when you get the PS4. That's the first thing you get. And that's quite nice, but you know, it remains to be seen what that is. It might be an incredibly stripped down version of it. It might be the whole thing. It probably won't be the whole thing because it says PlayStation Plus edition. And if ev basically everyone will get PlayStation Plus, then it won't be the whole thing. So it won't be making much money of that. So that'll be interesting. But it's, it's, it sounds nice the way that you get it. And then probably one of the biggest things about it, other than obvious things like the price, which I'll get to, 
is was um, Bungie with their world premiere, and it looked absolutely brilliant. Destiny, sorry, I completely forgot to mention that. Destiny is the name of the game, and it looked amazing. First of all, it reminded me very much of Fallout. Uh, it was um, it looked very much a post-apocalyptic world when he started actually moving around in first person. Because before he just showed a little bit of a little bit of a video, some alien thing. But yeah, looked very much like Fallout to begin with. And then someone else joined him. So you see, instantly it's multiplayer. It's a massive multiplayer on game, online game, I presume. And they w went into this um, building, massive building, and in there it just went. It just looked amazing. Got into a massive battle at the end, and it looked very much more like um, Borderlands than Fallout. So that's what it reminded me of towards the end of it, because you could pick up weapons, that kind of thing get loot and that that just looked insane that's gonna be awesome when that comes out then they started talking about some um, the cloud gaming service you already heard um, I can't remember what they're called but it's the cloud service that starts in um, 2014 first in the US and it's a whole thing about the old PlayStation games PS3 presumably going back to PS1 where you I guess have to buy them again even if you own them unfortunately but hopefully it won't be too much and you stream them while you're downloading it so you can play it while it downloads which is nice hopefully that's you know that starts early 2014 everywhere hopefully the US don't get it for too long before everyone else hopefully they'll roll, out, roll, roll that out quickly because that's going to be really quite cool and then on to the price I can't remember, I've already mentioned this at the start of the video, but I'm going to mention it again. If I have, PS4 will be $399, €399, Euros or £349, which is utterly brilliant. When you compare it to the Xbox One prices, £429, €499, €499. Euros. No, I'm not going to dwell on it, but... If you get an Xbox One, I just don't understand why anyone would at this time. I guess if you're a big Xbox fan and you want to carry on, but I'm hoping more people will go for the PlayStation because, you know, if, if everyone gets the same console, there'll be more people to play online, which would be nice. But yeah, <laughs> it was utterly brilliant, apart from would have liked maybe to see some more games. But I loved it personally. That's um, it was everything I wanted it to be. That at conference, the price amazing. The no, the no restriction of used games as it should be amazing. You know, I don't know why I'm calling that amazing because that's just how it should be. But you know, I was really worried. Only downer is the PlayStation Plus that you have to buy. But as long as it's as brilliant as it is now and not too much more expensive, that's fine by me because I'm going to buy it anyway. Anyway, this has gone on way too long. Hopefully I was understandable for the whole of this because I am very tired. It's now 20 to 5 in the morning. <laughs> I've got to play tennis at 1, so I need to go to bed. I'll finish off with Xbox Go Home. Thank you for watching.